I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached. Head is mad at black, got the boosters black to match. Right. Who needs country when you've got the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100? That's what has happened to Lil Nas X this week in his song Old Town Road, a song that Billboard actually removed from the country charts because it wasn't country enough. And now it's going viral. Yelena Adzik is here with this story. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a lot to talk about here, but first, let's start with the introduction. Who is Lil Nas X? Yes, okay, <laughs> so we're talking about a rapper essentially, but he is a marketing genius. This is a man who knows that instead of releasing, I'm going to show you some pictures of him, instead of releasing his work through the typical you know, places that you'd see, he decides to put it through an app that lets people add music to video games and it ends up becoming a hit before it becomes a billboard hit. It's just a lot of people were checking it out online. So this song, Old Town Road, it really does trip up and mix up a lot of different genres. Of course, uh, hip hop and rap being one of them, but country as well. And so it isn't easy to define. This is one of the video game videos I was talking about. And, you know, he himself would say that it doesn't neatly fit into the country category. So perhaps it's not so surprising that they wouldn't consider it a country song. However, it was originally considered for the country uh, billboard. And then it was only taken off after it started rising up the charts. And that led some people to think was that only because he is a black man and in a, certainly a genre that is mostly one that features a lot of white, primarily white male uh, figures. So this is a song that ends up getting Billy Ray Cyrus, who certainly is a stalwart on the country music scene, uh, on board. Here's an Instagram that they posted together to come up with a collab of this very same song that's already, now we're talking about it, it's number one hit. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a sense now of Billy Ray Cyrus's version, which now the Billboard Music Association, they're saying that they're going to possibly reconsider it <laughs> as a country music song. My goodness, you can just decide for yourself. Have a listen. Hat down, cross town, living like a rock star. Spend a lot of money on my brand new guitar. it has got a habit, diamond rings and Fendi sports bras. Riding down Rodeo in my Maserati sports car. I mean, it's a pretty catchy tune it, yes. with or without Billy Ray Correct. Cyrus, right? It is very catchy. That is undeniable. And you know, a really interesting quirk to all of this that a lot of people haven't been reporting on or talking about as much is the fact that the writing credits here, co-writing and producing credits here, go to two of the band members from Nine Inch Nails. So could you arguably, and, and it's also sampled, a Nine Inch Nails song is sampled within that. So could you arguably say that maybe industrial rock is in this genre too? It's just in many ways ways what we're talking about here Arthi, is that it's quaint to even talk about genres anymore because everything in 2019 it really overlaps a lot so I think that that is that's really part of a conversation that we need to start having okay so Nine Inch Nails writing it you've got a little bit of Billy Ray Cyrus yep. a little bit of Lil Nas X very diverse song but it's not the first time that we've seen like a country and rap collaboration it's not you know I was thinking about and probably you are too the early 2000s we saw this collaboration uh, between Tim McGraw Obviously, huge name within country, but also Nelly, huge name within rap. And do you remember this, Diddy? Have a listen. <laughs> remember this song. Do you remember <laughs> it being country? Does it feel country to you? I mean, I guess it sounds like it's a little country, but you wouldn't actually put it in one box or the other. I well, mean, that's it, right? It was and pop. It was pop. And, and that's exactly the key word here, that so much of this really has just become pop. You know, when you think back to the pioneering days in country, and you think of names like Charlie Pride, obviously, but even Darius Rucker, who transitioned Hootie and the Blowfish, if you remember, from pop to country, uh, said that as a black man, he felt it was very difficult. He was uh, often sent threats uh, when he he wanted to cross over into the genre of country and and so it wasn't easy for him to do so so I think that there uh, is still a conversation to be had about reluctance of you know really embracing all kinds of people into various all kinds of genres and it continues but yeah it does seem in 2019 that much of it this talk about boxes it feels a bit quaint and this song took on a life of its own oh it did <laughs> yes all right thanks for this Yelena we'll see you soon